Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are figuring out if Bell Mead Reserve Bourbon can stand up against other giants in its weight class, like 1920? So, I recently reviewed this Bell Mead Reserve Bourbon. I really, really liked it. I think it was really, really quality for blended MGP, and I think it's at a good price uh, compared to its competitors at $60. But at the end of that review, I made a statement that I'm not sure I entirely agree with anymore, which was essentially, it doesn't hold up against other hitters in that weight class. That being said, I wanna see how it goes against the other two monsters in that weight class, which is your good old rare breed bourbon and your 1920. Also, with all the hate that 1920 getting after the label change, I kinda wanna see, can it still be rare breed? And just like every other blind, I have these blindly poured with a key to the side, so I don't know which one is which. I have ABC, today we're gonna go through, nose them, taste them and then kind of score them, compare them, see how they hold up next to one another. Is the Bell Mead similar? Is 1920 still the monster I remember it to be or did it lose quality with the label? Who knows? Let's just jump right into it with whatever the heck's in glass A on the nose. Ooh, toasted oak, vanilla cream, nuttiness, oak, cherry. This one's so much like vanilla cream, cherry, a little bit of breadiness. Kind of like a cherry cobbler with like a huge amount of like cream on it. Just so much like vanilla marshmallow fluff that has like a nice little like torch on top of it. So it's a little toasty, a little bit of nut sprinkled on there and some oak. Mm. Oh, all these bourbons are gonna be fantastic. This is gonna be a great blind. Let's go ahead and get on to B. Ooh, okay, so this one's a little lighter, less nuttiness, a little bit more like sweet, like vanilla cream, but also a little bit more fruit in there. I'm getting a little bit of a strawberry. Yeah, it's 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 not as aggressive. I'm not getting any like the cinnamon I'm getting on glass A, on glass B, but it's very sweet and fruity. Honestly, I'm kind of digging the nose of B a little bit better just because you're not getting that aggressive like cinnamon and nuttiness. It's just like very luscious. It's like a, almost like a vanilla, like a parfait without any of the granola or anything. It's just like, vanilla yogurt with like every single fruit in the world. It's really nice, really nice. Cherries, strawberries, red fruit, a little bit of like a, almost like a blueberry in there. Some pineapple. There is still that cinnamon graham cracker note. It's just not nearly as heavy on A as it is on B, but let's go ahead and get on to C. So far, I'm digging all of these. Ooh. I'm so like, uh, I hate this because I know exactly what C is. I don't know about A and B, but C, I know for a fact, bananas, Sunday, a banana Sunday, banana split Sunday, a little bit of nuts. The, ooh, a little bit of like, almost like, it's more bready today than it is like a Sunday, but there's like, it's like, Banana bread with like vanilla ice cream that's like melting down the sides and some caramel, a little bit of nuts in there. Kind of feels like it's almost like building on top of what I was getting from B. Like I'm still getting a lot of fruits. Um, there's just a little bit more of like kind of like a dark like graham cracker bready, uh, a little bit more nuttiness in um, C as instead of B, but like it still has that like nice like sweet fruit. It's just the only fruit that I wasn't getting on B that I'm getting heavily on this one is bananas. So much banana. All of these are fantastic bourbons on the nose so far. A is bringing a little bit of like a nutty cinnamon characteristic. B, it's more of like a yogurt parfait without any granola and just a huge fruit salad. And then C is that, that like banana sundae split, banana bread brown forming characteristics. So let's go ahead and get onto the palette of C. Mm. Yeah, 
Ooh, that's so good. Banana, nutty banana bread. Yeah, it's 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 exactly that. It's the nutty banana bread with like vanilla ice cream on top that's kind of starting to like melt down the sides with a little caramel, strawberry syrup, or no, cherry syrup, and then a little bit of like a dusting of nuttiness. Huge explosion of cherry and banana. So much vanilla cream sweetness and then that like brightiness that's really really good let's go ahead and get on the palette of b Ooh. Ooh. oh hello there this one sweet creamy vanilla caramels a nice little punch of cinnamon on the tongue not on the nose but there's a slight like little like punch of cinnamon and then a huge like fruit sundae again so much fruit so much caramel so much vanilla wow that is really good and it's there's no like tinge of ethanol like i will say on c i was getting a small like tinge of ethanol but on b there's no ethanol whatsoever it's very it's smooth i guess it's very put together everything's just flowing really well. This is like breakfast in a glass, but your breakfast consists of cinnamon toast crunch, vanilla yogurt, and a fruit salad. That's exactly what it is. I know obviously that's super compartmentalized, but it's like brown sugar, cinnamon, vanilla, a little like toasted graham cracker, so much like creamy vanilla, and then like a huge explosion of fruits cherries, strawberries, blueberries, still that pineapple note. That pineapple note is staying through the whole way for me. Nice like pear, definitely getting some peaches. Overall, I mean, I could go on, but it's a huge fruit salad explosion, fruit punch type vibe going on in there. Let's go ahead and get onto the palette of A. That's nutty cherry, cinnamon, toasted oak, chocolate oh wow that chocolate is good that is so good and a huge explosion of like creme brulee like it's like toasted marshmallow with like that like nice like dark brown coating not black you didn't burn it but it's like that nice brown toasted coating i have a ranking that being said i do want to acknowledge my bias so i'm a 1920 old forster fanboy and i'm 95,000 percent sure c is 1920. i'm extremely confident on that one so that being said i think 1920 c is the best followed by i'm gonna go b and a i there's something about b the the cohesiveness there's no like aggressive notes but honestly like so C is right here, B and A are right here. I'm just slightly giving B a little bit of an edge just because I enjoy the flavors coming off of B a little bit more than A, even though A did have a little bit better of a finish. But overall, all these were extremely close. There's just like little bits and pieces that I enjoyed on ones other than others. So I'm ready to figure out which ones these are. I'm excited with how close this was because there wasn't a standout thing. I was expecting Rare Breed and Old Forester 1920 to just dominate the um, Bell Mead, but whatever's in B and A, really, really close. So let's get into it with an answer. Okay, so in A, we have Rare Breed. And B, we have the Bell Mead, and D, we have 1920. So, 1921 for me, again, I mean, no surprise there if we're gonna be completely honest, but Bell Mead beat Rare Breed. What? 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 I didn't see that coming. Um, but I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not the hugest Rare Breed fanboy. Does this hold its own against other high value quality bourbons at that $60 threshold or price point? The answer is heck yes. It's 
really good. I spoke out of turn, honestly, and I am picking this up and keeping a bottle of this on my shelf moving forward forever. As long as they keep the quality up, I'm all in. Because honestly, it was uncomfortably close to 1920. If you guys like this content, please do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. I know this was slightly different from what I typically do because I don't typically do a side by side by side just to figure out if something's quality because I want to usually figure out which one's a winner or the best bourbon. But like, I'm more so just trying to figure out was I wrong by saying that there's better out there, which I mean, there definitely is because like 1920 better, but it beat rare breed. So there might be better out there, but there's also better right here as well. So take that as you will. Also check out the Instagram, Facebook, and the Patreon. The link for that is down there below. We appreciate y'all so much for all your support. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later. Oh,